are getting some very terrible calls this morning, but we are also getting calls from students who are saying, we're not all sex mad, booze mad. Some of us are enjoying university and behaving sensibly. And having yeah. fun. Yeah. And having fun. And that's the time of your life when you should be having Absolutely. fun. But it's the boundaries we're talking here. And, yeah. and what we're talking about is, is, is when that has turned into something else. Yeah. And Absolutely. that's precisely what's happened with Emily. Uh, it's a very distressing call. Hello, Emily. Hello. Hi. Um, why did you call? Um, I saw the story about being raped at university, um, and I, I went through something similar um, when I was at university quite a few years ago, and it's affected my life ever since. This is 16 years ago? 16, yeah. And it still haunts you now? Yes, it is. What happened? Um, it was at a friend's party um, at university, and we were all very drunk. Um, I did meet somebody there, this was the person involved, um, and sort of past about 12 o'clock, I have no recollection until I woke up um, naked on the sofa at his house. And you knew you'd been raped? Yes. Um, yeah. And, do you, and, and obviously we have to be really, really careful here, so absolutely no names, but, but you know who did it? Yes. I knew, I knew his name, it was a person I met at the party. Okay. Um, but I've never told anybody since, and what, it's affected what, life. Why didn't you say something at the time? Um, because I was embarrassed, and because I was that drunk, people would say, oh, you can't remember, obviously nothing happened. Mm. Mm. It's quite scary. Denise? Well, the good news is that it is never too late to do something. If it has haunted you for, what, 16, 16. years, yes. it's time the haunting stopped. And we'll make sure that you know where you can go to, dis to get rid of all that terrible debris that's up there at where the back can of you your go? mind. You can go st to a rape crisis centre or to some of the helplines that we have at any time. And I have had people write to me after 50 years. Right. Never, never too late. Yeah, it is never too late. You've taken the first step today by ringing. It's a really, really brave, courageous thing to do. Mm. And I think this shows how much it haunts people. You know, it doesn't go away. And I think no. we have to deal with it and we have to get the help we need. To did, you ever, did you ever tell anybody, anybody close to you, or did you ever talk about it with anyone? The first people that I've told is you this morning. Wow. And I've never wait... told anybody, even um, my best friend that I live with, I couldn't bear to tell anybody. And what about, what about now? Now you've said this out loud to us. Are there people around you you can talk to and discuss it with? Not really, to be honest. No one in your family knows? Maybe my mum, but it'd be very hard. Mm. Are you married, Emily? No, I'm single. I have been for quite a few years. The longest relationship was three years. Yeah. And I just find it very hard. Are you close to your mum? Yes, thankfully. <laughs> Could you talk to her about it? Um, I could talk to her about it, I think. What would you say? I would say that it's best to talk to a third party yeah. first. You love your mum so much that yeah. you, the last thing but you her need mom, to well, do... The reason I said that is she thinks her mum suspects. Well, it may be that when she has got rid of some of the angst and the tears that will come yeah, and the coming. pain, <laughs> after that, maybe you can talk to your yeah. mum. That's your choice, who you right. talk to and when you do it. The important thing is that she talk to somebody now. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, the genie is out of the bottle now. Mm. We know, we sympathise, okay. we will make sure that you can talk to somebody who can help and then maybe talk to your mum and say, Mum, I'm okay now, which she couldn't say initially uh, not right now because she's not okay. Mm -hmm. So if she, if she moves on a bit, and then, Mum... Maybe dialing our number today was the first yeah. step of... Uh, of, of exactly. No, I don't think you ever get over something no, like that, obviously, but, but maybe no. it is the first step of you feeling better about yourself and about your future and just being that little bit more positive mm. and it may be not haunting you quite so much. Yeah, and getting right. rid of the guilt, I think. A lot of rape victims feel so much guilt and they keep yeah. it in and actually when we speak, we let go of that guilt and we start to heal, which mm. I think is so important. Uh, cause mm. When I woke up, I literally just left and I've no idea. Yeah. yeah. Two and years, never seen him again, quite since. 
Sort You've of got nothing. Didn't want to know. No. Nothing yeah. to feel ashamed about, no, Sarah. Absolutely not. Absolutely and, and, nothing. And nor should you feel guilt. If mm. you feel guilt, it's misplaced. Mm. You didn't rape anybody. Mm. Um, you. Uh, you were. You need to. To continue to talk and uh, and if you stay where you are now then we've got we have the most fabulous team in our phone in room and uh, and they'll continue this conversation on and then as Denise said put you in touch with the right people and when we say we put you in touch with the right people all those details go on our website the reason we don't say it out loud is that they're then suddenly their websites crash because everybody goes there so that's why we do it stage by stage um, stay on the phone and we'll, we'll continue to chat okay and well done thank well you for done, calling Sarah. today that was a big move Emma's on the phone now. Hello, Emma. Hello. Hi, Emma. Um, you're worried about your younger brother? Yeah. Um, he's just gone to um, university this weekend, and um, he's actually worried himself about the um, peer pressure of drinking. Like, he doesn't like drinking, and he doesn't want to drink, but he's worried that um, he won't have any friends, and no one will want to be friends with him if he doesn't drink, which I think is quite worrying. I would like to bet that there are a number of people in his group who are going to feel exactly yeah. like he feels. It just needs somebody who is sure enough of themselves to say, I don't fancy drinking tonight, or I think I've had enough. And you might be surprised how much support he'll get. As I said, those calls are coming in saying, hey, some people are going mad, but not all of us. That, that's echoed actually by Jody, who said to us on, on Twitter, uh, and is a fresher, I'm afraid I won't make friends if I don't go out. The pressure is huge. Yeah. yeah. Because everybody's afraid to make the first move, and nobody's saying don't go out at all. It's knowing yeah. when to stop. It's knowing when you've had the last drink of the evening and being brave enough. And I would say to every parent, the preparation for uni has got to start years before. Yeah. Mm. When you give your child a sense of self-worth so that they can say, you do that if you want to, but I'm not going to. And you, they need to feel, you know, somebody who, who rang in said, uh, it'll be social suicide if I don't do this. No, it no. won't, because secretly inside, we all admire somebody who stands up and yeah. says no. I mean, I, I work with lots and lots of young people, and a lot of them, a big majority of them, are actually turning their back on this sort of behaviour. You know, drink levels are going down with the young people. So, yes, there is a majority of, you know, there's some of them doing it, but I think the majority of those not doing it is actually growing. And, and um, I think that, you know, when did having friends and alcohol become, like, interlinked? You know, I, I don't understand that. And I think that, you know, people want a friend that's can be there, a they can rely friend. on them, it's genuine, yeah. not someone who's just a friend when they're drunk. Yeah. So I think that people like, um, you know, your brother, um, are, are people that they, people want at university. Mm. You know, this is the sort of person I want my daughter being friends with. Mm. And yeah, I think there was a like everyone that meets him loves him. Yeah. And I said, just get a drink and no one has to know that it doesn't have alcohol in it. Yeah, if you go absolutely. out, no one will know. Yeah, yeah. precisely. Yeah. And, and also the thing is, at the end of the evening, if you're not drunk and they are, they won't remember that you weren't anyway. <laughs> Uh, true, yeah. I, uh, he needs to find someone like Emily, and Emily, uh, you know, and, and, uh, because she's got in touch with us here. Although the majority of students enjoy getting stupidly drunk and partying every night, uh, there are some of us who prefer the quieter nights. Don't let the bad stories represent students as a whole. University is definitely worthwhile and always quietens down after freshers yeah. anyway. Mm. Although freshers does extend, certainly, my experience beyond the first. But week. there are obviously like-minded people Absolutely. out there, and you just got to find them. But also, it's, yeah. there's a difference between not wanting to. You don't want to go out and get totally blotto but you also don't want to be dull um, I mean some people well, and there's nothing wrong with that at all no. you stay back and study and there's nothing wrong with that That's what but there, there, there are you know yeah. it's a, it's a, it's definitely a sliding scale between yeah. you know falling over every night and ending up in alcoholics anonymous because you've got a drinking problem mm -hmm. or tempering your drink and having fun or staying back yeah. and studying it's deciding how you want your night to be and making sure it ends up like that, not allowing other people to decide yeah. how your night will be. And that surely, you, you, you know, you, you're intelligent enough to have won a place at university. That means you can work that out mm. and, and be strong.
And these are the, pa um, the conversations that parents need to be yeah. having. You know, what are you going to do? You know, how do you know when your limit is? What are you going to do when you're at that and someone offers you a drink? And I think we don't always have these conversations because we're scared and frightened, but absolutely think we should. I mean, I started three years ago and my daughter didn't yeah. go till next year because the reality is that that might happen and we have to prepare them. Boots sponsors this morning. If you fancy a decent laptop for university, this one here took me a small side salad, some hideous crockery, and my mum's Sunday best. Thanks to me, a little trip to Curry's PC World. This HP goes full 360. My mum says it's great for taking notes in your lectures, but I prefer it for watching movies. If you want to find out exactly how I got this one, click here.